a bit difficult to, to uh, it gets in the way I think of it. So I'm just going to talk at you. Um, so I'm going to talk about, I'm really going to talk about the sort of dangerous, alluring siren song of negative emissions and this concept of negative emissions. Um, and that doesn't mean that negative emissions are all nonsense. I don't think they are, or that they don't have any kind of role to play. It's just that they're very, very easy. Uh, there's something it's very easy to misuse and to turn into something that's very confusing and um, basically greenwash, which is what has happened. Um, so uh, particularly because we're ethical consumer, we're focused on companies and advising people which companies to buy from. So we spend a lot of time looking through company reports and uh, companies are using this idea of negative emissions in ways that undermines their stated climate commitments, which well, the good side is they now do have quite a lot more climate commitments than they used to. By the end of 2021, a third of the largest listed companies in G2, G20 uh, countries had net zero um, targets, which is up from a fifth the year before, and it's significant numbers. The trouble is, the quality of those targets is not always as good as you would hope. And there's a lot of confusion going on about what they actually mean. And there's a lot of words being banded around that nobody really understands what they mean. Um, there's one that I came across, I, this one you see quite a lot and I came across it just the other day, was a company that claims that they're working towards being net zero and they're also at the same time already carbon neutral, which I think a lot of people might think that those sound like the same thing. Um, they're not really the same thing or that company was using that those terms differently. Um, but uh, uh, particularly carbon neutral is often used to refer to offsetting, uh, which, um, uh, but also, which means you just offset all the emissions that you currently have, so you're not uh, actually reducing your own emissions at all. Um, but um, uh, in the net zero targets are generally a bit higher quality because they're for the future, and so you've got some time to achieve them. Um, but still, 41% of the firms who had a net zero target in 2021 plan to use offsetting to achieve that and 66% of those failed to specify any conditions on those on that, any quality conditions at all. So I'll come to the quality of offsets. Um, I'm just gonna just briefly cover uh, what negative emissions are. Um, so at the level of the whole world, there's only one type of negative emissions, which would be emissions technologies that remove carbon from the air and lock it up for a prolonged period. Um, and there's various ones of those. I'll come to them in a minute. Um, for an individual or a company, you can either do that or you can also pay someone else to reduce their emissions, which we're all very familiar with. Um, so in terms of the um, negative emissions technologies, just roughly what some of them are, um, there's uh, habitat restoration, which things like afforestation, restoring peatlands. Um, uh, there's uh, biomass with carbon capture and storage, uh, which is probably the biggest one. Uh, I'm mean, the one that people expect to be the biggest one. Um, there are some demonstration scale plants in operation um, in America, particularly there's one in Illinois. Um, and Drax is proposing to convert itself to being uh, a Bex facility uh, and to bury the CO2 in the North Sea in the next few years. Um, uh, there's biochar, which is you grow the plants, you turn them into charcoal and it preserves the carbon for hundreds or, or some, uh, some people say thousands of years um, because the charcoal doesn't uh, decay. And there's, there's direct air capture, which you just take the, the carbon dioxide directly out of the air. Um, uh, we, uh, and um, there's just, you can also just build with biomass. That's another one. So, I mean, you just in as a building material, which preserves it. Um, so all of these, the trouble with them is that none of them are ready to be rolled out around the world. Many of them are working at a demonstration scale, but there's still very serious issues around them in terms of the cost and the amount of land that will be required because plants um, take up a very large amount of land 
and the, current, the planet's a bit round currently, and governance issues because they often have the capacity to be very bad for the climate if they're done badly, and they often can be done badly because of the amount of land they take up. We don't have a huge amount of land to go around. So the thing is, they may not be, we, we probably can't ignore their role altogether, but they cannot be a substitute for cutting emissions now because they just don't have the capacity to be a, a huge component of um, uh, the uh, solution to climate change. They can basically be used to mop up the dregs. But um, uh, it, it's basically, they, we probably will need them because it's almost impossible to eliminate greenhouse gases altogether. And all of the high level plans for keeping global temperature rise to two degrees C, let known 1.5 uh, degrees C require some use of them. Um, uh, so I think a lot of the plans basically involve reducing emissions by about 90% by 2050 uh, from 2010 levels, and then the remaining emissions, which will have to be the only the sectors which is hardest to tackle, will be neutralised with net negatives to take us to zero. And then a lot of the models include the idea that as a globe, we are going to then go into negative emissions, which is quite ambitious. Uh, so one minute left, Josie. Please. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Um, I'm going to just uh, cut. Uh, um, so uh, companies are using this and they're using offsetting um, in order to avoid um, uh, uh, or what? Just hang on, what shall I cover? Um, basically, what we, what the, what various people, including us and the Science Based Targets Initiative, which is an organization encouraging carbon companies to uh, set net zero targets and to uh, make steps to achieve them, what they're saying that companies ought to do is not just ignore this altogether, but to make targets that uh, say that they're going to cut 99 to 95% of all of their emissions by 2050. And then only at the very end could they think about using any of these uh, uh, net negative technologies. But at the same time, they do think that funding is required to scale these things up because we are going to need to use some of them. So companies should support their development as an additional contribution to tackling climate change. And the, uh, the, that's really the overriding message is that these are not uh, alternatives. It's not a matter of we can do this, we can use net negatives or offsetting or we can cut our own emissions. You have to do both. And so um, they should not be ever part of company targets right now because they're just a way of delaying actually tackling your own emissions. Um, so I will stop there. We've written a lot more on this, which is on our website. <laughs> Fantastic, Josie. Thank you so much.